Hello, my name is Sam Feltham and welcome to Expert Interviews here on Smash the Fat. Uh, now firstly, I must apologise for being a bit MIA for the past couple of weeks. Uh, I've been busy finalising my book, Slimology, um, which will be available on the 26th of December, known as Boxing Day here in the UK. Um, and uh, yeah, you can get that still on pre-order for half price. Uh, if you go to uh, smashthefat.com forward slash slimology and then you can go to your requisite Amazon store from there. Uh, but today um, I'm very, very, very pleased uh, to introduce you to the paleo chef, Pete <laughs> Evans. <laughs> uh, uh, the paleo chef, that's quite funny. I've actually have never been called that before but... Um... <laughs> Stoked to be uh, called that yeah, on your the, program, mate. Thank absolutely, you. absolutely. And you're probably one of the uh, the most well known paleo chefs that are out there, right? Um, and I um, um, oh, go I'm on. Pretty vocal about it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I guess anyone that's that's into this is is pretty vocal about it because they see the benefits of adopting this 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 way of life and. Um, once you see the benefits and feel the benefits and witness the benefits and read uh, the evidence that's, that's out there, you do want to spread spread the message and um, as far and as wide as possible. And, and I'm being quite fortunate. I mean, I'm a, I'm a chef, uh, and over the last sort of 10, 15 years, chefs have become sort of this this uh, strange uh, phenomenon in superstars, in right? Popular, in popular culture, yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's like wow. Uh, I mean, if you look at Jamie Oliver. I mean, what a what a wonderful example of of what one man can do when when he's puts his mind to something and and uh, has a passion for um for for changing for changing people's perceptions of things. And um, I definitely think he's paved the way for for what's about to happen at the moment on on a global scale. And um, I have to thank him for everything because he has actually opened the door, and now it's it's now it's uh, time to really spread the medicine. Absolutely, um, the medicine of real food. Uh, well, it is. It, it really is, and it, it's really quite simple. And um, I was reading something on his blog recently where he's got a uh, nutritionist, and um, they said. Uh, and don't quote me, but I, I think they said that uh, they don't really agree with the paleo way. They prefer uh, more of a. Uh, they want to look at things in moderation, and and that, if that suits them, then that's fantastic. I think it's 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 they've done so much good work to at least get um, people cooking again and not scared of cooking. And I think that was really um, a powerful movement that Jamie did, and and I can't wait for people to grab onto paleo or low carb, high fat or the gaps or any of the ketogenic style food diets because mm -hmm. we know it works and it, it, the name doesn't really matter. What matters is the outcome and, and how people feel once they start eliminating some so-called healthy food groups or, or reducing them dramatically and increasing their fat intake and, um, and also really thinking about where their food comes from. As well, whether it's whether it's animals or or plant based, um, and I think I I think there's a huge movement about to take over the world. I I agree, and I think kind of the the overriding thing with all these movements, uh, LCHF, paleo, sort of keto stuff, um, is quality over quantity. Um, that's it. That's that's really what it is all about. Um, is about trying yeah. to provide quality nutrition for people. And it seems so odd that so many kind of dietetics associations are kind of against this. Like recently uh, the British Dietetics Association put paleo on their top five diets to avoid in 2015. And if we're telling people to avoid real food, I think there's a real conflict of kind of interest there. Um, so let's start off by finding out, you know, what, what does paleo actually mean for you, and how did you actually get into paleo in the first sure. place? Sure, and, and as I said, I mean, I, I wear a shirt because paleo, and uh, I'm quite proud to be 
the paleo chef or, or part of the paleo movement. But the word doesn't really interest me that much. It, 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 doesn't, I, I, it doesn't even need to have a label. It's just that this was how it was introduced to me mm -hmm. when I first heard about it. It was actually paleo slash primal because I read Nora Gigaudis' book, uh, Primal Body, Primal Mind. Uh, my fiance Nicola Robinson, uh, was reading it in bed one night and she gave me a, a gentle nudge in the ribs and said, y you should read this book. And uh, I know when she gives me that look that uh, it's, it's something serious. So I devoured the book over the next couple of days and, and I was just like, wow, I said, it just makes sense. Um, so we adopted principles. Um, I felt like crap for, a, for about a week or two while I adjusted and then I popped out the other side and, and felt wonderful. And, and so for the next year, basically, I enrolled in the, um, the Institute for Integrative Nutrition out of New York with Joshua, Joshua Rosenthal, which is the world's largest nutrition school. Um, and they're not affiliated with anyone, and that's why I really like them. And mm. I mean, it's a simple, uh, beautiful course that, that talks about mind, body, spirit connection. It talks about health and uh, nutrition. Um, primary food for them is our emotions. Secondary food is actually what we put in our mouth. And uh, Joshua, who runs the school, and I have become very, very close friends um, since since uh, doing the course because I wanted some sort of qualification to. I'm a qualified chef. I've cooked over a million meals personally in my life, and I know everything there is to know about making food taste good, but I've never really focused on, well, what actually does food do for us apart from give us pleasure now on a, on a nutritional value. So I thought I'd better do some study, get a little qualification, or get some sort of qualification, but just bury myself in books and literature and look for holes in this paleo way of life because I knew that I've already got a uh, quite a large profile in Australia and also in America through the TV series that I do. And I thought if I come out publicly and say I'm paleo, mm -hmm. um, there would be no turning back. So I actually, after, it took me about a year and a half to really actually say, you know what, this works. I can't find it really any holes in it. Everybody's saying it's working for them. I, I can't, there's very few people that I've found out of, tens and tens and tens and hundreds of thousands of people that said it didn't work for them. But then I'd have to question, well, what did they actually eat? Mm -hmm. um, and what were their pre-existing conditions and how long had they had those for and how long did they think it's going to take them to actually work on this? Because some people that have eaten a terrible diet for 40 or 50 years, they're not going to get better in a week. <laughs> you know what I mean? It might take a year or two or three or even longer to, to work on some of these symptoms out to get their body functioning properly. So when I came out publicly as a paleo chef, um, you, you mentioned it before and I don't want to take up too much time on this, but the media backlash has been phenomenal. You know? mm. and it's like, wow, it was very quite startling. And, um, and it, even today, um, there's, I've just found out there's a page that's been created about me and our major newspapers have reported the stories and really? it's 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 a little bit funny it's a little bit scary mm. but I also know that it's happening exactly as it's meant to be happening mm -hmm. um, for this to get out to a wider wider audience and, and making it put it this way everybody in Australia now would have heard the word paleo and it's only been fueled because of people like your Dietetics Association, our version of them in Australia, being so vocal against it. Yeah. Um, so I can only thank them. <laughs> I know, this, is, this is the thing that I don't think they realise. <laughs> it's kind of like the teenager, the teenage girl that you tell, you're, you're never going to go out, you're never going to date, and then she climbs out the window and does it anyway. You know, yeah. ends up in a worse situation if you allowed her or maybe chaperone the date or something like that, you know. <laughs> Well, I, I think I've got a bit of a target on me, and, and they're playing darts, but they, they don't realise that every time that they, they hit the target, that it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think if they were smart, they'd actually just go, you know what, we better be quiet because we're actually adding more fuel onto this fire. And uh, the, the positive stories, I mean, I've got a Facebook page under my name, Pete Evans Chef, and we've got over half a million followers now. Um, and to give you an idea of how quickly that has grown, this time last year it was probably at 100,000. Uh, a year prior to that it was at 10,000. And, and what's happening now is if you pop on there, it's just story after story after story after story of, 
uh, people reclaiming their health. And I'm not here to say that this is a magic pill, but people are finding amazing and miraculous results from everything from depression, anxiety, diabetes, type 1, type 2, um, uh, behavioural disorders in, in, in their children, uh, learning difficulties improving, um, social social skills improving, and we haven't even got into IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's disease, we haven't even touched on, on heart disease, we haven't even touched on um, so many so many different things. I mean, it, it, things like and all I can put it down to is, is food as medicine or food can be the slowest form of poison that you put into your body, and I think people are starting to cotton on that Yes, there is power in food, and no, everything in moderation doesn't seem to be working anymore for us. So maybe we do need to actually go take a step back and think about this seriously, because all throughout our history, to get to where we have, people thought about food very, very seriously. It was yes. it was a thing that meant survival for us. And as my good friend Nora Gagata says these days, she goes, most people think of it as a nutrient uh, devoid source of entertainment, food. The end of 2014, I'm sort of happy it's coming to a close because I think 2015 will be a, a dawning for, for um, a new generation and, a, and mm -hmm. a, new, a new consciousness and a new way of thinking about this. And yeah. What was considered extreme, paleo, I think within 12 months will be considered quite mainstream. Yeah, and I think that if people haven't adopted it, they will be feeling a little bit left out maybe. And, and I don't mean for it to be trendy, but I just think that it's going to happen yeah, very, very quickly. There's a moment of enlightenment coming. Um, and kind of the, I mean, Mahatma Gandhi famously said, uh, first they ignore you then they laugh at you, then they mm -hmm. fight you, then you win. And I think we're mm -hmm. kind of in that third stage of them fighting us, you know. I mean, it's quite a strange fight. that They're fighting against real food, which just seems such, such an odd thing to do. Well, it is, and, and, and I don't like to get into the battles of the conspiracy no. theories or anything like oh, that, no, because no. It, all just comes, it all comes back to money. But um, I had a, friend, a chat to a very dear friend of mine called um, Trevor Hendy, who's... Uh, part of my little tribe of, of wellness experts, uh, Trevor used to be an Ironman in Australia and a seven-time world champion. And over the last 20 years, he's been working very, very deeply on the mind-body-spirit connection. And he, he spent a night at my house the other day and, and we were discussing this and, and talking about the disruption that's happening with the media and, and why people are feeling so threatened. And he goes, you, Pete, you've got to understand, he goes, you're disrupting uh, from being quite vocal about this. Uh, it's not so much people or corporations, it's the energy of these people and corporations. Everyone's happy to keep going along as they're going and you, you just keep, uh, and this movement keeps sort of like a bit of an annoyance to the energy field. And um, he, he goes, it's slowly starting to change, but you, you've got to not think of it as their, us versus them, it's just a collective thought pattern and it's mm. now it's just time to wake wake a few people up and and I always view food as the most tangible thing to wake people up because you know how you feel once you're eating well and I have a feeling that once people eat well that they start to energize and feel good and start vibrating differently and then what's left what's next is meditation mindfulness um, big picture thinking, uh, joining communities, joining tribes, having some really big thought leaders that are functioning on the most beautiful plane, and it, it just comes from love. Um, I'm, I'm going a little bit deep here, but I think this is this true. is the future, and I think food is important, but it's not the be all and end all. But I think it is a portal to to conscious awakening for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Much like, uh, I guess, the yogis would view vegetarianism and, and not eating meat as, as that conscious awakening. And, and we know through our research that, um, sure, a plant-based diet can be very cleansing for people at, at certain times, especially if they've had um, a toxic diet previously. Mm -hmm. But we also know that it's um, potentially, possibly not strengthening uh, for, a, for a long period of time. And that's what I love about paleo, low-carb, high-fat. I mean, it's not advocating slabs of meat. No. It's advocating good quality fats, moderate amount of protein and, and good quality vegetables. And most paleo people eat probably more vegetables than most vegetarians. Um, <laughs> I know they do. <laughs> 
And, and I, I fully res I was a vegan 20 years ago because I thought I was doing the right thing for my body. I thought I was doing the right thing for the planet. I thought I was doing the right thing by the animals. And um, at the end of the day, I became quite sick. And mm -hmm. I was making kombucha tw 20 years ago. I was I was meditating every day. I was doing everything I, I could. But my, my health definitely increased for the first year. But then it started to deteriorate after that. And I think it was through that cleansing. And then uh, I just started lacking fat in my diet. So... Uh, but I fully respect vegetarians and, and vegans. I, I, I believe we could all work together for the things that we care most about, which is uh, the future safety of our planet, um, uh, treating everyone with respect, and including the animals that inhabit uh, all species that inhabit this planet, and um, and creating the most delicious food that we can to nourish our bodies and, and make sure that the next generations that come through have the best possible health in place for them so that um, we don't keep, at the moment, we're creating a weaker and weaker species and yeah. and I think we can definitely change that. Yeah, yeah, we can definitely turn it around without a doubt. Um, and kind of on the on the note of delicious recipes, um, yes. the, the paleo chef, as you can see here <laughs> on my iPad, uh, which is wonderful, um, and I, I love the saber-toothed tiger there's on the oh. on, on the inside there, and then We've on, got one on, so I just got I just got my oh you got today, the official actually. one and then yeah there we go the big steak as well on the third page well you might see it released as that as well I don't know whether you can see that oh, but, exactly. uh, that's that's the inside jacket I like that one better than with me on the cover I think that was quite funny my uh, <laughs> my graphics guys made that up and I I loved it and. Um, <laughs> We've got some beautiful recipes, and um, yeah. I, I'll give you an idea of how how successful this is in Australia at the moment. Um, my my last book was released um, just over four or five weeks ago, and it's called um, Family Food. So it's uh, 130 paleo inspired recipes for the family, mm -hmm. and mate, it is it is the number one selling book in the country, and it's grain free, mm -hmm. dairy free and uh, refined sugar free. Now, I mean, it is selling more than, I mean, Jamie Oliver has been our biggest selling, uh, biggest selling cookbook author in, sure. in the world and in Australia. And this is the first book that's actually taken over his, um, his reign. And, and the second selling book in Australia, I think, is uh, I Quit Sugar. Um, yeah by Sarah Wilson and, and again there's just this movement happening for people hungry and I use that word uh, quite passionately they're hungry for this information they're hungry for recipes to feed themselves to nourish them but also to feed their families and I mean the publishers are just over the moon and they're just going Brilliant. and what I, what I see is the potential of this is other chefs jumping on board other nutritionists, other dietitians, other doctors, wherever these other fitness instructors, movement specialists, um, and naturopaths, all getting this information out there because mm. people are hungry for it. You know, it, there's there's room for many more people than me to be selling books and programs Absolutely. and blogs and podcasts yeah. and this because we think it's a very small, you know, this is very small, but you know, we have 23 million people in this country alone, and out of them, 70% are overweight or obese. And think about that just for a minute, and think about the United States, think about UK, think about Europe, think about Asia. I mean, there's so much ill health in the world, and we have one tool out of our toolbox that can potentially help people. And uh, I'm proud to be a part of this movement. Definitely. I mean, it sounds like next year is going to be a very exciting year um, in terms of kind of what you've got lined up as well. Um, do you want to reveal well, anything about that? Well, next year is full. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Fully booked I'm, already. I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing a quick uh, book tour in New York in, in the USA um, early to mid-January. Then I come to the UK for the first time. Yay! Right. Um, Mid to late Jan, I'm f coming to film with uh, Dr. Natasha McBride for my second series of my TV show called The Paleo Way, um, which actually starts airing in Australia this weekend. Um, it'll be picked up for, in it's been picked up for international distribution, so 
wherever you are in the world, look for the Paleo Way TV series. It's eight episodes. Um, the people I've interviewed uh, uh, from all over the world, but uh, I've interviewed William Davis, author of Wheat Belly. I interviewed um, in Milwaukee. I went to saw him. David Perlmutter from a neuro neurologist who wrote Grain Brain, interviewed him in Central Park, uh, visited Sally Fallon, uh, author of mm -hmm. Nourishing Traditions, cooked with her in her home in Washington, Nora Gagoudis, who is my mentor, interviewed her in Portland, Oregon, uh, beautiful. Uh, Gary Torbs, Why We Get Fat, I interviewed him in San Francisco. Um, who else did we, we, Frank Lippman in New York, a functional medicine doctor. We interviewed Martha Herbert from the Autism Revolution and Harvard professor. Uh, brilliant. Matt Lalonde, uh, the Kraken uh, yeah. at Harvard as well. Um, who else did we interview? We interviewed Joseph McCola, Dr. McCola. I uh, went to his offices in Chicago. Um, in Australia, I interviewed um, some wonderful health professionals as well. Um, but it's a cooking show with a little bit of information. Um, Brilliant. I'm launching, we've launched a 10-week program for anyone wanting to adopt a paleo lifestyle, and I've teamed up with Nora Gagaldis for that, Trevor Hendy, who I mentioned before, to talk about changing belief patterns and negative self-beliefs in yourself mm. and setting goals that really inspire you. So I've got Trevor doing that. I've got Nora doing... The the science, because out of everyone that I've ever interviewed and met, Nora is the ultimate researcher, and her she has so much integrity and just wants to see a better better world. And I've also teamed up with uh, Luke Hines, who's a paleo fitness instructor. So we, we cover mind, body, spirit, mind, body, spirit, education, and I deliver yummy recipes. <laughs> so <laughs> I am the chef of the group. I feel like I'm the baby, but um, uh, we've created all of this. Um, I The TV series was basically, fuck it, let's go make a TV series on the Paleo Way. No one's going to yeah. pay us to do it, so let's just, let's just do it. And I emailed all these experts from around the world, and I wrote, hi, I'm Pete, I'm a chef from Australia, I'm filming a new TV show, would you like to be on it? And they all said, where is it going to be shown, and who's it with? I said, I don't have a network. Uh, I have no idea if it's going to get shown, but mm. I'm a pretty determined person, and I think it'll it's going to get made. And they all came back and said, "Fair enough, <laughs> we'll be on it." And we're like, sure. Yes, gold. So, the second series, we've got Dr. Natasha McBride, who we're interviewing, who wrote the Gaps Diet, um, cooking in her house in about four weeks' time. Uh, Dr. Terry Walls from the Walls Protocol, mm -hmm. um, MS. Um, cured or healed herself from MS. Um, uh, Tom Norden, we're going to interview him as well, uh, yeah. Fathead. Yeah. Um, we've got some, some other fantastic guests as well that I can't exactly tell you just yet. But, um, yeah. It's going to be a cracker. But it's, it's, it's a cooking show with a little bit of information just to mm. plant some seeds into the general public's mind and make them think differently and go, hmm, I better investigate this one further. Yeah, that's what it's all about, planting those seeds and kind of letting them grow. By them, yeah, kind of what it's all. And um, and February March, uh, I bring Nora back to Australia. We did a tour this year called the Paleo Way Tour, where we travelled around uh, every pretty much capital city of Australia and stood up and talked in front of a thousand people. Um, Nora gave a three and a half hour lecture, which was just brilliant because wow. I wanted to prove that this is not a fad diet and there is actual science behind it. Um, this year, when we, or next year when we're touring, uh, we're doing Learn to Cook. So Nora's coming out, we're going to do questions and answers with her, but um, I'm going to attempt in a four-hour window to cook 15 to 20 paleo-inspired recipes, but to give people the basics. So we're going to cover off fermentation, uh, both beverages and, um, and vegetables. Uh, we're also going to be making bone broths to keep, teach people the basic building blocks. And it's, it's interesting because stocks or broths is the first thing you learn at culinary school, uh, mm -hmm. French traditional uh, cooks. It's, it's the building base of all great new, all, all great dishes. Uh, we'll be talking about offal because it's, it's, it's an often overlooked important part of this lifestyle and I just yeah. love it. I've got some bone marrow actually and some liver in, in my fridge today that I got. Um, we're going to be talking about kids' lunches, what to send, to, to send them to school with. Um, also family budget meals because a lot of the time we get labelled that this is too expensive or too elitist or inaccessible and uh, I just want to give people really basic humble solutions where there's no fancy ingredients, um, you might have to look, go to a farmer's market or look online or, or join a, a, a 
community-minded group where you can buy in bulk, possibly. Um, but it's just talking about these things and making it feel not so foreign mm -hmm. or not so um, not so scary for people because I think that's what it is. I, I see people on my Facebook. I don't know where to start. I'm like, just cook a roast. <laughs> yeah. start, start with a roast. Start with a vegetable and chicken soup. Start with mm. some eggs in the morning with some avocado on the side. Uh, you know, it's 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 really basic stuff. But because people are so used to a certain thing, you know, it might be pasta on a Tuesday, fish and chips on a Thursday, mm. um, pizza night on a Friday. It's just how do we slowly change it? And I always say it's just one meal at a time. But you got to change your uh, the belief system first, mm -hmm. or, or the desire to do it, and then magic happens. That's right. That's excellent. Um, and that's kind of all encapsulated in the book. I mean, you've got some bits at the beginning there that kind of go into you know what paleo is, what it's about, and kind of giving people an introduction into what it is. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, the paleo chef and even paleo every day, which is launching into the, the UK. It's called Healthy Every Day in Australia, but yours is Paleo Every Day. I mean, cool. it's called Paleo, and, and there's elements in it that, to be 100% honest, I would I don't eat stuff in there anymore because uh, mm. I wrote some of these three years, two years, one year ago, and my diet has, has evolved. I've been Paleo for over three years now, and when I first started, I was eating quinoa and lots of it and, and um, um, the raw cheesecakes and uh, right. the, yeah. still, oh, still things with honey and maple syrup and, and uh, high, high fructose content and it was a transitional period for me and now you know I don't eat any I don't eat desserts or sweets or anything like that I, I eat I eat very basically and uh, I now I just eat the most nutrient dense foods that I can find on the planet um, as I said we've got marrow we've got liver we've got brains in there we've got kidneys we've got Beautiful silver beet or, or collard greens or um, spinach and um, uh, broccoli, cauliflower, uh, good macadamia nuts, and and I think where we're going to see this movement go, especially in in Australia, is is uh, an appreciation of our indigenous um, uh, owners of our land, uh, mm -hmm. the Aboriginals. Uh, I mean, follow Western A. Price, and he said the Australian Aboriginals were probably the most healthiest um, population that he, he came across mm -hmm. um, and this country that I live in has some of the most medicinal, highest medicinal quality um, uh, fauna and flora and we have a <laughs> crazy, we haven't tapped into that yet, we really haven't so part of what I'd like to do over the next two years, three years is really delve deep into what this culture, this country has to offer it and really bring back the indigenous uh, uh, indigenous way of life where they teach us how to eat from the land because they were doing a great job before before we brought in uh, the alcohol, stuff. tobacco and sugar. <laughs> Oh, mate, it's, 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 it's scary stuff over here. I saw um, a couple of weeks ago, I saw That Sugar film. I don't know if you've seen yeah. it with uh, Damon Gallagher. Yeah, Damon's a good um, friend of mine. Yeah, he's really fantastic. And kind of the there's a part in the film about Aborigines, and it's absolutely devastating. Um, mate, it, it, is really, it is really sad. Um, but I, I do have hope. And, yeah, we'll see. And I do have hope that they can educate us. Um, uh, us about how to eat even the true paleo. I mean, because they were, <laughs> they were doing it. They, and there still are some that are, do, that are doing it. And it's about getting that information to, to for them to share that and, and to empower us and to empower themselves. And um, it's something that I'm very passionate about. And I'm, I, I've traveled to Fiji a lot and I see uh, the devastating effects of, of you know, uh, modern day foods into their diet. I mean, they've got the highest rate of diabetes, type 2 diabetes in the world, and mm -hmm. it, 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 it's, it doesn't have to be like that. I mean, they, they were hunter gatherers, and now, unfortunately, they've, they've, they're victims to modern day convenience foods, and this, there's so much work to be done, and it's, it's, it's fantastic work, and and I think we're going to see see some miraculous 
turnaround soon. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Sorry, I get a little bit a little bit emotional about this sort of stuff. Yeah, so. absolutely. I mean, it's it's exceedingly important. Um, but as you say, there's there's hope. Um, at the end of the tunnel and I think 2015 is going to be a real kind of seminal year for real food Um, and it's going to make a massive comeback with so many TV shows coming out, so many books coming out Um, and kind of the Paleo Chef uh, is is going to be part of that Um, released in Australia and the US on the 30th of December um, and in the UK um, I believe it's on the 15th of January. Um, for, For those folks um, that want to go check it out on Amazon uh, for the US and Australia um, if you go to smashthefat.com forward slash TPCUS and then that will take you through to amazon.com and then for all the guys in the UK go through to smashthefat.com forward slash TPCUK and that will take you through to the Amazon uh, UK store there and you can check it out there um, and it also helps support the show as well. Um, and was there anything else that you wanted to direct people to as well? No, I, I think I just should just um, just clarify. I mean, it, what I said with the books, um, I think they're a really good transitional thing for, for families that are looking for ways to adopt this way of life. Um, there's recipes in there that they can associate themselves with and it isn't too foreign for them. Uh, there's a little bit of offal in there, but it's really just everyday food. And, and I've put in their desserts, and, uh, and we know that they're a little bit high fructose, but at least they're, if you're going to eat them, they're refined flour-free, they're refined sugar-free, they're dairy-free. So mm-hmm. I wouldn't call them exactly healthy, but they're better than probably what people are eating at the moment uh, as a population. But, but I'm proud of my books and um, we've got some fanta- I'm working with some really uh, enlightened professionals, health professionals on the coming books for 2016, 2017, which will delve quite deep. I mean, this, this is sort of a bridging thing for us where we really just explore food as medicine as, as quite serious topics um, because they are. Uh, if anyone wants to be have their hand held, we do have a 10-week program that we've just launched. Um, it's cheap as it's $99 Australia, so it's probably like what, what one pound for you guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> with our diet, with almost. our healthy dollar, almost. Um, but um, so that's that's at uh, www.thepaleoway.com. It's 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 slick. Uh, we've spent the last couple of years That's getting great. this just right. So um, it's got meal plans, shopping lists. Uh, we've made it so it's available globally. Um, it's we we we've tried to design it so that anyone that's never heard of Paleo can come on board, um, get all the information from Nora, so that they understand it. Because there's no point doing it if you don't understand why you're doing it. So I've it's, I've really made sure that I've got the right team in place to educate and then I've got the team to inspire, the team to motivate and then I just come through with uh, the, the good recipes which make it taste good because without the good food, <laughs> people aren't going to stick to this. So um, I guess I've got an important role to play. I always Very downplay important. myself but, but uh, yeah. I, I do the practical awesome. side. That's right. and, um, I'm looking forward to coming to the UK and uh, trying out your first new paleo restaurant so that I hear that's open yeah. and um, spreading the good cheer. Absolutely, it's fantastic, Peter. I very much look forward to to, to meeting you. It'll be absolutely fantastic. Um, and yeah, as as Pete said there, uh, make sure that you check out thepaleoway.com, uh, Pete's ten week program with Nora Gagaldis. Um, and uh, so, what was the what was your training? Trevor Handy and Luke Hines. That was it. That was it. Uh, fantastic. And then also check out uh, Pete's website, uh, which you can check out PeteEvans.com, and then it kind of forwards you. PeteEvansChef.com, I think. I think I'm redoing it at the moment, so don't even bother going to that. It's a bit boring. So. <laughs> cool. But yeah, definitely check out the Facebook page because there's lots of conversation going on. There. Oh yeah, jump on that. You'll love it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh. Um, and there's only one more thing to do, Pete, um, and that's to hear a smash it out from Chef Pete Evans. So on three, I want you to shout smash it out to the camera. So one, two, three. Smash it out. I love it. (laughs) That's awesome talking to you, Sam. I hope everyone enjoyed uh, having having a chat to me too. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Fantastic, Pete. Much appreciated. Take care, mate.